Hi, my name is Eleanor and I write about spiritual abuse. In my last video, Undercover in a United Pentecostal Church Part 1, we discussed a sermon given by Brother Braun Morton from Fresno, California at the Heritage Conference at the First United Pentecostal Church in Colorado Springs in summer of 2015. Now, we're going to continue listening to some more of his sermon clips and discuss what he says. I heard that some preacher's wives got together and they, and they talked and said, let's talk to our husbands and get them to change. And one of the preacher's wives spoke up and said, oh no, not me. And that spirit ought to be in every one of you preacher's wives. And you young ladies, it's going to be a preacher's wife. Let me tell you, if you can get out of being a preacher's wife, get out of it. If you can get out of being a preacher, get out of it. But the callings of God are without repentance. If God calls you, you've got to do it. But don't, don't, don't do it on your own. Make sure God's in it. So, like many other religious fundamentalist churches, there is that clear complementarian teaching that the husband is the head, just like Christ is head of the church, and the wife is to submit. Now, it's obviously a lot more complicated than that, and there are many, many people who argue for egalitarianism um, within Christianity and don't agree with the total submission of women. Um, but that is heavily emphasized in these fundamentalist churches is that woman's job, anyone who's born with a uterus, their job is to submit. And let me tell you something. Don't marry a girl that hadn't got it in her heart. And girl, don't marry a young man that ain't got it in their heart. Also, there's a really big emphasis on finding the right life partner and that you have to find the one. Like there is one person out there for you. Purity culture teaches this a lot that the reason you should abstain from sex before marriage um, is because like there is one person out there for you who is specifically made for you. And it really sets people up for failure, I think in a lot of ways when they realize that there's not really this one specific, really awesome, special person out there, there might actually be multiple people that you could be compatible with. But that's not really what gets taught in these churches. I'm telling you that a preacher's wife can make or break a preacher. There's some preachers today that's not fulfilling the will of God because of a wife. But on the other hand, there's some real good and once again, we get that emphasis that a fundamentalist pastor, in this case, a Pentecostal pastor, has to have a very specific kind of wife. And that if the wife isn't doing her job, which usually is just to be submit and do whatever her husband wants, that it will ruin her husband's ministry. And it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on these wives. I don't care if it's a small church, it's a great church. If it's an apostolic church. You saints that's here tonight that's from, maybe from a small church, love that church, love that pastor. You're the will of God, stay there. It's really interesting that he teaches throughout this sermon that whatever church you're in, you're supposed to be there. That's God's will for you. Like, who is he to determine what God's will is for you and for your life? Um, it's an interesting dynamic that comes up a lot in a lot of these very authoritarian churches. It's a big topic in a lot of these churches that are really into the doctrine of pastoral authority. And to you young men that's going to be preachers, when you're pasting a church someday and a saint from another church shows up, this is the way you do it. You go to them and say, praise God, how are you? Uh, whose church you go to? Oh, I go to brother so-and-so. -so. Does he know you're here? Well, no, we just thought we'd come to church over here tonight. You got church tonight? Yeah. You said, well, I, I want you to know that, really, you don't belong here on your church tonight, and I will be calling your pastor. The preachers, if you're not doing it that way, you're not doing it right. right. And if you're a saint of God and there's a preacher somewhere else trying to woo you to their church, that's not the kind of preacher you want.
And let me say this. You can build a big church and a great church without compromise. I'm telling you, Brother Johnny go there did it in North, uh, North Carolina. Without compromise. So, quick couple of things here. Apparently, he's encouraging pastors to tattle on people who visit other Pentecostal churches because once they have become members or I guess prayed through, got the Holy Ghost at their church, according to him, you're supposed to just stay at that church under the authority of that pastor. And I think that this is definitely part of the cult-like elements of the United Pentecostal Church for sure. Like you have to stay in this one church within the domination. You're not allowed to like change to another church if you don't really like what's going on. You have to stay there under that pastor's authority and do what he says. Um, and also when he brings up compromise, that means the standards. So like the long skirts, the not cutting your hair, all the specific things that go along with being um, fundamentalist in the Pentecostal church. That's what he means. He's like, we don't relax on any of the standards. We don't watch movies. We don't do any of those things. Praise God. Well, it's fun tonight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. And you say, well, I wish you could hurry up because I'm hungry. I'm feeding you right now. Yeah. So if we take him literally, I guess we don't need food. All we need to do is listen to his sermon. I'm not comfy with this. Bob said he forsook the counsel of the old man. It's in every generation to think they can do it better than the old man. I remember when I was just a saint in the church and sitting under my pastor, I thought, oh, I'd do it this way and that way. I found out, oh, he was right. We got some fine young men. We got some fine young ladies. Let me just set your mind at ease. These brethren and myself, we're not afraid to leave this church in the hands of the next generation. We're not afraid. I tell you, everything's going to be all right, brother. And we're back to that emphasis on you have to listen to your elders, I guess, even if they're wrong. Um, and also a lot of emphasis on that the next generation has to be just as good as us and be ready and not compromise. Just in case there's somebody among us that might decide to go charismatic someday. If it's in your heart, in your spirit, you better get it out tonight. This is also disturbing. We're back to you can only be a true Christian if you're in the Pentecostal church. You can't be part of any other charismatic church. Like you have to be in the apostolic Pentecostal church. Wow. Old men for counsel, young men for war. Praise God. You take in the United States, the it's these old, oh, I just thought of something. These old generals, they need to listen to them. But it's the young men that takes the, the rifle and goes to war. And I'm telling you, we got a problem in the White House right now. He doesn't listen to his generals. He doesn't listen to his generals. He listens to those around him. And that's why America's in trouble tonight. Hooray for far right fundamentalist politics. Woohoo. Putting politics in sermons. Not great. Don't be a fool and try to change the doctrine of the oneness of God in Acts 2.38. Don't be a fool and try to change holiness within and holiness without and separation from the world. Don't be a fool and say ladies can start wearing pants. That's right. Don't be a fool and say well I think the ladies can trim their I'm going to tell you what's in Pentecost. It's probably in here tonight. I'll turn my head so I can't see. All this dyed hair. If you're a man or a woman, 
woman, you got dyed hair, you need to go home and wash it out tonight. And here we go with the cult speak. He's assuming that some people in his audience have dyed their hair. And he's even assuming it could be a guy. And he says, you know, we can't relax on these standards. Get with the cult speak. Nobody can have dyed hair. It's very authoritarian, very controlling, very cult. I said, hurry up, brother, won't I am? Are you listening to hurry and I'll preach in hurry? <laughs> now, let me tell you, this is just one scripture. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 31, the hoary head, which is means gray. In the Hebrew it said gray. Or the gray head is a crown of glory. If it be found in the way of righteousness, it's a crown of glory. And then I don't know what this says, but I'll turn that 20 and 29. If it don't work, we'll go somewhere else. <laughs> this is what it's not Bible study. 20 and 29. It said the glory of young men is their strength. The beauty of old men is their gray head. He feels really controlling of his audience. Listen to me in a hurry and I'll preach in a hurry. And then again, there's that emphasis on old age and you have to listen to old age, which is interesting because he is old. Just saying. I'm going to say this, boy, I hate, I really don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it and I don't want to offend nobody and, 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 and whatever, but I'm going to tell you something. I realize in some cases it is a necessity. You understand? A necessity. But if it ain't a necessity, you need to have church on Sunday morning and Sunday night. This is yet another hallmark of cults, taking up a tremendous amount of your time. I'm telling you, there's, uh, we're cutting down on revivals, you know, just having church on, 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 on service nights. And, and uh, you may be seated, standing up and you'll get me food any soon. So. <laughs> now let's say praise the Lord. To me, this reads like another control tactic. He says, standing up won't get me through any sooner. Um, and it is like my friend who grew up in the Apostolic Pentecostal Church has also told me that it is a sign of respect to stand up and clap for the preacher and it shows that you're listening and you're engaged um, so that is definitely a thing but he keeps trying to tell them exactly when they can stand up and praise and exactly when they can sit down and when to do this and when to do that and then we lead it back into the emotionalism of speaking in tongues and um, the heavy emotional manipulation that tends to happen in these services now some folks said, well, for me to shout, i got to feel it. Well, the Bible says, praise, now he listen, praise his name in the dance. Well, the Johnson got up here, and I said, let's praise his name in the dance. So we just praise his name, praise God. And there's more of that emotional buy-in to the cult that can lead to people being manipulated, honestly. This is talking about Jesus. Is he our example? Yes, sir. Are we Christians? Yes, sir. Does that mean Christ-like? Yes, well, let me tell you what Christ is like. In Revelation 1 and 14, I'm still on that diet here. Because I was plowing along there. You young men, you've got to be sensitive. And I, I hooked on to something there. So i got to get my Ford diesel pickup and go back and pull it out. Okay, those are some logical leaps to try to convince us that we really should not have dyed hair. And are we going to be like what Christ is like? Well, of course. I mean, yeah, if you're in the church, that's usually the goal. And then we get back to the dyed hair 
and Jesus doesn't have dyed hair, so he has white hair in Revelation, and clearly you shouldn't have dyed hair either. And then he's like, I'm gonna teach all the church doctrine. And you know, repentance, baptism, Jesus name, Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues to get into the church. And then here's what you have to do to like stay saved. Um, and it's very high pressure. And again, you have to commit and buy in all the way. Otherwise you're not gonna make it according to this church doctrine. We're to be Christ-like. It said in verse 14 of chapter one, it said his head and his hair. His hair, what was it? Were white like wool, as white as snow. That's talking about the Lord. You'd be disappointed if he dyed his hair. Yeah, off to the Bible. Hey, gray hair is of the Lord. It's found among the righteous. If you're dying your hair, you figure it out for yourself. It's found among the righteous. I know this may be offending somebody tonight, but you may take it as a word from the Lord. For the record, I absolutely would not be disappointed if Jesus dyed his hair. And maybe this is just because I didn't grow up apostolic Pentecostal. I grew up in the independent fundamental Baptist church and we had other rules that we were super big into. But I did just want to note a few things that my friend said about this service from the perspective of someone who grew up in the Pentecostal church. Whenever he is saying, sit down, I'm talking, um, it is, you know, encouraged to clap and say amen and say that's right and call back to him um, to show that you're accepting the word of God from the preacher, she said. So he is telling him to sit down so he can talk. So he is being really like domineering, but it's also like confusing because you're also supposed to respond. Um, and then when he's talking about physical discipline in the last video um, and he's going to whip all those young boys. Um, he's basically saying that he's dominant and but even though he's old and dying like he could still whip them which is why we have to uphold the doctrine and standards for the next generation okay also another weird thing while ball games and organized sports are considered idol worship in the pentecostal church because your focus can only be on god and not on competition um you can still play some games as long as it isn't organized or professional um, so sometimes even within that conference, within a heritage conference, my friend said they would go to a lock-in at the YMCA and they would play like a volleyball, basketball, racquetball game, but you just had a singular team and, um, you couldn't compete against other churches or against a school's team because that would be like an organized sport. But if it's just for fun and teams decided to play a little bit of the spur of the moment, that's fine. As long as it's not an organized thing. That was how her church interpreted the whole we can't play sports thing. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go over part three of this sermon in my next video and see you there. Bye.